I've been working real hard to get the new animal room completed here, and that should be done in just about a week. But there are a few things elsewhere that I gotta address too, like in the mock animal room. This setup, of course, houses Cookie the Snapping Turtle. There's the little rascal right there. Up to no good as usual. She's always curious as to what I'm doing, but as she's been growing larger here, she's kind of in her terrible twos, if you will. She's in here just wrecking everything, ripping all the plants out, rearranging things, and it just no longer serves her since she's so much larger now. So I wanna get in here, do a little rescape, and just make things a little bit more suitable for her until we put her into a larger setup. That's all good and well, but first order of business is that I gotta get her out of here. That's easier said than done though, so I'm gonna go and drain the tank first. Okay, so I got it all drained down, but she's still hiding in this middle cave area here. So I'm gonna actually have to remove all of this hardscape to access her. Okay, so with those pieces removed, I actually have pretty good access to her. So, got her here. So as you can see, she's not happy about this at all. And she's definitely at the size now where I'm not trying to get bit by her. So I'm gonna put her in a bucket real quick and then we'll finish this up. After removing all of the hardscape, I gave the glass a quick scrub. Then I began putting everything back in the tank. I more or less wanna create the same design as before. The only difference is that I wanna increase the amount of room in the front of the tank, as well as underneath of the logs so that it's all taller and we can increase the water level. As before, I simply locked it all together in a way that it can't be easily moved. I periodically checked for stability as I went because I don't want her to be able to move it as she digs around. Once I got the mainscape addressed, I added accent stones and more substrate to account for what's been removed during water changes. Even though the arrangement is much different, the scape itself looks very similar to before. That's because I wanted to ensure that she has caves and other areas to explore. During the day, she spends the majority of her time in these areas. Anyway, I filled it back up and added the original plants. I also added some more Maranta repins. She ripped out all of the stuff I added before and made a nest out of it, so I tried to anchor the roots a little better this time around. I figured we might as well take a closer look before adding her back as well. Again, she's a common and alligator snapper hybrid that I got back in February of this year. She's about tripled in size since then and is looking really good if you ask me. That said, I don't like to handle her much because she doesn't like it, so let's get her back into the tank. She looked so good in a tank like this and immediately began exploring. I put some pellets in there as a peace offering, but she didn't accept them this time around. We'll circle back later to see how she's doing, but there's something else that I've been putting off that I really need to address. Sammy says you should like and subscribe. My good friend reached out to me and he said that his aunt had a koi pond she was trying to dismantle, but she had to find a good home for the fish. Naturally, he reached out to me and we're gonna be doing some big ponds here soon. So I'm gonna get these fish out of here. We'll put them in this bucket along with an air stone and all of that so they're good to go. And we'll take them back to the house. I'm gonna do my best to catch all of them without draining this but I feel like I want to do it anyway, just so I can ensure I get them all. So at this point, I've netted up quite a few of them. You can't really see them in there, but I know there's more in there and I can't really see them. So I got it draining from here and then I got it draining from that hose as well and as it kind of lowers down here see if i can't get some more i got it all drained down and as far as i can tell there's only one fish left in there so we'll get him netted up put him in there with his friends and that should be good to go so there ended up being three left in here and there's only about a half an inch of water in there so it's pretty easy to tell that there's nothing remaining but i also dragged the net across the bottom several times and i think we're good to go 
back at my place and I've got all of the fish in this five gallon bucket here. It's just your standard bucket with the hole drilled in the lid and I've got it hooked up to a battery backup as well as a USB air pump, which then goes to an air stone on the inside, just to ensure that the fish have oxygen. Now for the meantime, I'm gonna put them in this 20 gallon bucket just for probably the rest of this day and then I'll get them into something larger like this tomorrow. And the thing was, is when I was going through and catching all these fish, I'm thinking something's a little weird here. I was looking at them, I was told they were koi. I asked the lady again, she said, yeah, they're koi. I'm looking at them and I'm thinking, I really don't think these are koi. But I'm like, okay, maybe I just gotta catch a few more to see. And as I went through, I realized that they're definitely all goldfish, which is fine. I like goldfish, I probably prefer them over koi, honestly. But I'm like, catching them and thinking, man, she only told me there was about 20 babies and it ended up being where she wanted to get rid of the pond entirely. I was under the impression initially that I was just gonna take the babies, but she said, just take all of the fish. So I'm talking to her a little bit more and I said, how, how many did you start out with and when did you get them? And she said, I started out with two of them. I guess she got them from a friend of hers and it was in May of this year. I kid you not, there's gotta be at least 80 fish in here. I'm not even joking. I would have, if I knew there was that many, I would have had multiple buckets, but I didn't at the time. And so it's crazy to me because my goldfish, I had them living in the pond for three years or so. These have just been in there for a few months and they had that many babies, which is absolutely insane. But I gotta get them out of this bucket. We'll get them in here and then we'll get them into something else later on. So I'm gonna go through and actually catch them all by hand and put them in here and count them up as we go because I'm very curious how many of them there are. My guess is 62. Let's see. Sixty, sixty-one, and sixty-two. I believe my guess was sixty-two or sixty-three. I just dropped sixty-two in here, so we're gonna keep going because I feel like there's at least ten more. Sixty-three, sixty-four, seventy-seven, and seventy-eight, ninety-seven. We might end up with the perfect hundred here. Let's see. 98, 99, 100, uh, yep, 101, 103. That's right, there was 103 fish in there total, and I knew it was gonna be a lot, but I was really surprised by this. And even just looking in that 20 gallon bucket, it doesn't look like that many, but trust me, I counted them all up one by one, and that's how many there were. Anyway, it's the next day, I went out and got this 100 gallon stock tub, and I'm gonna put them in here for a few weeks. It seems like a good sort of quarantine hospital type setup that I can just watch them, make sure they're doing all right. And that might seem kind of small for that amount of fish, but a lot of them are babies. And the pond that they came from was actually probably only around 150 gallons. So this isn't that far off. Plus, once I confirm that they're doing all right, I'm gonna move them in over with the other goldfish and they can just be one big happy family. I moved the fish over to this viewing tub so we could take a closer look while the pond fills up. The first thing I want to make note of is the difference between a common and a comet goldfish. Now you hear those thrown around sometimes, but there's a distinct difference between the two. And you'll see with this really large one here, it has these flowing fins to it, as does this decent sized one here. And those are comet goldfish, meaning that they have these long fins. And if you were to turn the fish sideways and look at them next to one of the other ones, they have a more torpedo shaped body. Whereas the commons like this one here, they have a stouter body. And with that, you'll see that this white one here is pretty fat looking, and so is this orange one here. And at first glance, you might think like, oh no, they have dropsy or they're sick or something like that. But if you look at the way that this is shaped down here, it's almost box shaped. So that tells me that these are actually pregnant females. So it's just something to look out for. If they had dropsy, the scales would be pine coning and all of that. So I'd say at a quick inspection, all of these fish look pretty healthy. There's all kinds of different variety in here. I saw a few that had um, the Shubunkin traits where they have the shiny scales. And that leads me to believe that wherever these fish originally came from, somewhere in the bloodline, there's the Shubunkin. Yeah, if you look at this one here, Definitely, you can see it has those, the shiny scales in it, and obviously the blue and everything, so it's pretty cool. 
Anyway, I just wanted to take a closer look at these and show you what was going on, but enough said. Let's add them on in. It's been a few days since I filmed all of that. All the fish are in here and they're doing well. That said, they are still being a little bit skittish just because of everything that they went through. Anyway, I dropped in a monster sponge filter that I have hooked up to a piston air pump. This will keep the water aerated and filtered at the same time. And don't sleep on sponge filters, they definitely get the job done. Even though I'm going to build a pretty large pond for these fish and the ones that I already had, I don't know yet if I want to keep all of these. There's so many of them and sure they'll breed to that amount anyway and there will be adequate space for them. I just don't know if I want to start off with that many. And with that, I'll say that goldfish tend to get a bad rep, but they're really an incredible fish and one of my personal favorites. The thing is though that you gotta provide a proper sized home for them since they do get kind of large. Ideally, I'd say you want to keep them outdoors, but if that's not possible or you insist on keeping them inside, something like this stock tub is a really good option. They're not that expensive and you could get a really good volume of water that will allow you to keep a healthy group of fish. So it's been a few days since all of that. The goldfish are doing awesome, although I still don't know what I'm gonna do with all of them. If you were me, let me know what you'd do down in the comments. Also, Cookie's doing great as well. Her tank is still a little bit cloudy though, just because of the way the aqua soil got stirred up. So I'll have to do a water change on that at some point to get it all squared away. But that's pretty much all that I have for you in this video. As you can see, I'm finishing things up here. This is the last bit that I have to sand. Then I'm gonna have it painted and primed in about a day. And in two weeks, we're gonna do our first official build in here. It's something huge, been planning it for a really long time. And I know that you're all gonna absolutely love it. So stay tuned for that. As always, I appreciate your continued support throughout this entire process. And things are about to get crazy here real soon. So thank you so much as always for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, Surface Squad, take care and peace.